Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and welcome to the brand new uh, side scrolling auto battler roguelike Raiders of Valhalla. Now, I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but just stay with me, it'll all make sense. So, as I mentioned, uh, Raiders of Valhalla is a brand new uh, side scrolling auto battler roguelike, which is kind of weird, kind of cool. Anyway, we'll get into it. Uh, but before I do that, for full disclosure, I was gifted a code through Press Engine, so thank you to Press Engine and AFIL Games for gifting me this code. I will not and will never let that affect my opinions on the game, but I do want to make sure that it is, you know, here in the video, very clear. So, Raiders of Valhalla was developed and published by AFIL Games and is in early access as of right now, so it is not feature complete and may change very drastically, potentially, uh, by the time of full release, so please keep that in mind. Now, when you first look at this game, you're like, okay, you know, pretty basic graphics. And when I looked at this game, I was like, hang on, this, this right here, this is like core late 2000s, early 2010s, you know, armor games, addicting games, new grounds, all like the really core flash game websites that just, it just, you know, came flooding back. I'm like, okay, let's give this a try. Let's relive our nostalgia days. So. Uh, the basic, the story is very basic here. You play as a group of dwarves for some reason who are also Vikings. I don't know what the connection is, to be honest with you. Uh, but basically, Jormungandr or the World Eating Serpent has, you know, returned, and whoever slays them will gain, will gain great valor and victory, and be, you know, be sent off to Valhalla with numerous treasures. So that's basically your premise: that these warriors are setting out. To slay the big bad world boss, get the treasures, and make it to Valhalla. So, how does the game actually play? Well, honestly, pretty well. So, you, you start out with a single character, right? And then you go on what are known as raids. So, there's just little side missions. There's just little missions where you click on one. It'll tell you what the rewards are, what the difficulty is. You hit start, and then you watch your person just literally scroll across the screen and kind of bounce into the enemy until one of you dies. Uh... It's honestly not much more complex than that. So, yeah, you bounce into each other until one of you dies. You then check your battle stats to see how much damage you took, how much damage you dealt, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, here's where we get into more of the nitty gritty. Um, you're able to go into their inventory, equip them with weapons, armor, pets, and other kind of trinkets. Now, the trinkets are for just your main character just kind of like the first character you start out with it does not have to be your leader per se but that is the only one who can equip these trinkets that will affect every run armor and weapons come in a variety of you know rarities whether that be white green blue purple or gold so they'll have different levels and different side effects that come along with them pets on the other hand are slightly different so i didn't actually unlock these till pretty late in my recording i played about an hour um and for pets you have to unlock the pet you know through one of the dungeon missions but then you have to go to the forge and use certain consumables for the forge to grow the pet and then attach it to one of your characters now i got a couple runs where i got pets but i didn't have the forge unlocked so i couldn't hatch them then when i did have the forge unlocked i didn't play enough to get another pet to be able to hatch it so i don't know exactly know how those work uh, but it could be an interesting system so after you've fully equipped your first character, you then go to the shop where you can buy other weapons and armor, as well as recruit new characters. So here's where another interesting system comes into play, synergies. Now, synergies have different passive effects depending on the types of characters that you've recruited. Guardians will have a role that leads more into defensive bonuses. Healers will lead into health per second regenerated. Uh, your barbarians you're raging your attackers will have more of an attack bonus you know all these kinds of things they're pretty basic and the game does give you a list as to what synergies are active at what times who is providing you those synergies and how to activate some of the others depending on who you want to recruit i think that's great because it allows for has kind of more complexity and team building in a game that is otherwise honestly pretty simple thankfully you can equip you know your frontliners with swords axes spears halberds and you can equip your rear folk with wands, staves, bows, and other ranged weaponry. So, like, it does create a good distinction between them. 
the idea is as you you know do runs and then when you lose that run you gain meta progression points and as you level up your meta progression you gain additional perks and additional classes to help make the game more complex as it goes on pretty basic roguelike stuff so for example you start out with just you know your tank your barbarian and maybe i think a healer but then you slowly unlock more kind of you know buff type classes in the form of the priest or the assassin or just other interesting classes as well as a variety of armors and weapons to help vary up that gameplay just a little bit here's what i also found interesting so for each mission you get gold now that gold is obviously used to buy uh, new slots for your team or new weapons and armor that gold is also used to upgrade the shop in terms of the you know rarities that you'll find and the percentages at which you'll find those rarities but you can also upgrade your missions making them harder and giving you better rewards so it's really kind of a uh, the more you invest the more rewards you'll get but also the harder the missions are going to be the more likely you are to just straight up lose now one mechanic that i unlocked pretty late into my recording session was known as a white flag this means that if you do lose an encounter you don't just lose that run you get you know a, kind of a redo to reselect a different mission or do something differently than what you had done now you unlock i think i'm gonna guess up to three white flags once you've kind of maxed out your meta progression which i think is a fair enough system all this is meant to culminate towards a boss fight for a particular area that will then give you you know even better rewards and potentially a relic now the relics are really interesting because obviously they'll give you very different bonuses and modifiers to make each run feel unique like i said you're only able to equip three of these relics and only on your main character the first person you pick for the run so choose wisely honestly the game is pretty small you know it's uh doesn't have a whole lot to it there is more coming because obviously it's very early access not future complete they want to add things like a skill tree uh things like an adventure mode which i think could be interesting i really hope that they play with the roguelike elements more in the story if there is going to be a story because take something like hades or returnal or i don't know how many other roguelikes uh because i don't really play them all that much but those games integrate the roguelike structure into its story into its narrative and I think that's when a roguelike works best, is when they talk about, hey, there's a reason why you're restarting, why you're regenerating, or why you're coming back to this, the beginning, and it plays into that narrative. I think raiders could do that because they haven't really set themselves a standard yet for what their story is going to be, so they have that kind of open space, that blank canvas to work with, and really decide, how do we want this to go? Maybe it's this endless time loop until Jormungandr is stopped, and then, you know, they can finally break out of it, or however they choose to do it. With that being said, the game does retail for $16.99 Canadian, or your regional equivalent, so I will leave that up to you as to whether or not you feel this game is worth the price. Uh, I only encountered about two bosses, you know, as far as I got in my first hour of playing, but I do feel like I unlocked a lot of what there was to see, and I don't see people getting, at the very least right now, getting, say, more than four hours out of this, which is fine. I wanted that old 2000s browser flash game experience, and I got it. I was pretty happy with it. So, you know, keep in mind your mileage will vary. I would say around four hours for now, but that'll probably increase as it becomes more feature complete and is made more complex. With that being said, thank you to AFL Games and Press Engine for giving me this code. Really appreciate it. And thank you, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond so much for being here, for watching. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!